Hai teman, berlangganan dulu yuk ke kanal ini dengan cara menekan tombol subscribe. Jangan lupa juga untuk menyalakan lonceng agar kita dapat terus terhubung. Terima kasih sudah mendukung kanal ini agar terus membuat video yang bermanfaat setiap harinya. Selamat menikmati. Happy I am personally, but also 58,000 San Antonians that work in the hospitality industry, everyone, as, as we've all lived uh, a very weird episode. Uh, most of us here in San Antonio, we were so scared we wouldn't have a busy holiday season. We've already turned on our lights, and all we've been waiting is for you to show up. So thank you so much for coming. Yay. Yes, my name is Robert. Thank you. Gracias. 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 I'm going to be your boat captain for the next 30 minutes. I do have three simple rules, everyone, that I'd like for you to follow to keep you safe. There's no standing, no smoking, and everyone that's sitting on the rails, just be mindful, be aware of your arms and elbows. This boat's a real boat. It's not on rails. It weighs over a ton without any of us on it. So if you see the boat going off course and about to hit anything out here, do yourself a favor. Don't put your arm out, okay? Mm -hmm. Let the boat be a boat. It's very normal for them to bounce off of whatever they're about to hit. Uh, and don't try and stop it. It's not going to help. Just <laughs> avoid whatever it's going to hit. <laughs> On board, we have 40 life jackets. We've never needed them. We've never used them. They're brand new in every boat. I'm required to let you know they're here. If anyone ends up in the river, for whatever reason, please don't panic. Just stand up and walk right now. It's three feet deep, everyone. 90% of this boat is deep. <laughs> yes, if you still need a life jacket, give me some time. I'll get you one. Um, one of the things that I've learned over the years, just from ex experience of doing this, everyone, many of our visitors that come to this city are very extremely knowledgeable of San Antonio's historical past. What I've also noticed is that they don't know the little intricate details of our history, and they don't know San Antonio in current times. So on this particular boat ride, everyone, I'm going to do something that I normally don't do, and what I'm going to do is share, share with you some history, but also the little intricate stuff of San Antonio that most people are not aware of. If, and if I could impress you with information that you're not familiar with, then I've done my part. Sounds like a fair deal? Yeah! If I could have everyone look right back over here. This hotel behind me, as simple as it looks now, this building here, was on the front page cover of newspapers around the world in 1968. It, it was so impressively built that it made it into the book of Guinness for being the fastest built in the world in 1968. It was built by two brothers, engineers that graduated from Texas A&M College Station just down the street from San Antonio. This is what they did and how they achieved the world's record for our World's Fair of San Antonio. They built the first four floors, including the center elevator shaft of the building right here on site. It was built like a normal building. The construction workers here had no idea that weeks before, 500 cubicle rooms had already gotten started eight miles away in an assembly line. At the beginning of the line, they're pouring concrete cubicles As the cubicles moved down the line, they added everything a room needs. By the time it reached the end of the line, they're putting a soap on a soap dish. Two fully furnished rooms are mounted on flatbed trucks. A simple spray can, they wrote one, two, three, four on the roof. They were brought over Interstate 35 on flatbed trucks. There's video and photos of this. As they got here, the crane operator knew what room to get and where to put it, because it already had a number on it. And they started stacking them up. They would do up to 35 rooms in one single day. Wow. If you go to YouTube, you guys know what YouTube is? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Um, you can see the entire video of the construction one block at a time. It was completely done in seven and a half months, everyone. In America, it's the fastest built still. Now, just from walking along the sidewalk, we go past it, we don't think much of it. It's so ordinary looking, but there's nothing ordinary about it. 
If you go inside the lobby of that hotel, you will see the photos, big old photos, beautiful. Anyone says, uh, excuse me, do you need any help? Just tell them I'm looking for a Starbucks. And they'll direct you to the second floor. There's one there. How many of you have seen the movie Miss Congeniality? With the adorable, talented Sandra Bullock. Isn't she adorable? She is, she could not make a bad movie in my book, everyone. Sandra Bullock filmed that movie in its entirety in San Antonio. Most people don't know that. That whole movie was filmed here. We had her for almost a year filming in this city. Do you remember the famous pageant scene of that movie? It was on this stage up ahead, everyone. This was the stage of that scene, the pageant scene of the movie. She was asked, what would be a perfect day for you? She was the third runner-up. She said, oh, it'd be, a, it'd be a day in April, April 25th. Instead of saying something like solving world hunger or, you know what I mean? Um, she didn't say any, nothing profound. She just simply said April 25th because it's not cold or hot. It was all set right here, and I was very fortunate to be working that morning it's being filmed. We don't stop tours for nothing. We don't stop for shows, we don't stop for film, we don't stop for nothing. We operate 365 a year. The only thing that stops us is rain, or that we sell out. We, we're getting overbooked all the time. And get a load of this, as I came around the turn, as I'm doing now, the producer was off camera. He'd pick up a blowhorn and yell, cut! Everyone stopped acting, including Sandra Bullock. As kind as she is, she'd walk right up to the edge here and say hi to all of us as we went by. And on one of those many occasions that I was coming through here, you're probably not going to believe this, but Sandra Bullock and I, we locked eyes, guys. <laughs> I don't need to convince everyone on board. She and I know exactly what happened. <laughs> I'm sure wherever she sat, she's telling the same story. <laughs> sure. Rumors spread pretty fast in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm sure it's all over the hills. There you go, yeah. And here, let me bring you up to date. Those will be visiting San Antonio for the first time. San Antonio, everyone, is currently the second largest city in Texas after Houston. We've surpassed the population of Dallas with at least half a million people. We've become the seventh largest city in America. And for almost 14 consecutive years, San Antonio receives the most visitors than Houston and Dallas do together. San Antonio receives anywhere between 15 and 20 million visitors. And did you know that the top three most visited sites of Texas are the San Antonio River, one, two, the Alamo, three, the river boat tour you're on, everyone. That's right. And, and, and people come here, couples, families, singles, they come here and they walk up and down the San Antonio River all day long while they're out here. And I've heard people, well, people have told me, oh, this is like Venice. Oh, this city feels like a European city. It doesn't feel like we're in America. And that's because of the multicultural influences that we have throughout Texas and San Antonio. I, I'm often asked, is this river natural or man-made? And, and visiting a city like San Antonio for your very first time, I can see where people would have that that doubt if it's natural or not. But let me clarify it for you. This is a natural river with two small man-made portions to it. This river starts four miles north of downtown at the campus of the Incarnate Word University. The spring that feeds it, it's called the Blue Home. The minerals deep inside the aquifer when they reach the oxygen uh, surface, they turn bright blue. Now, you're, you're thinking, oh, just a, like a shade of blue? No, bright blue. It looks, it looks like it's painted inside the water walls. And then it just cuts through the city. It ends up at the San Antonio Bay, north of Corpus Christi, 140 miles from here. Now, you see the trees amongst us? Many of our visitors will question me, Roberto, why do you guys have so many dead pine trees? These are not pine trees. They are cypress. They shed their leaves like any other tree would. Not like pine trees. And get a load of this. The trees that are around us right now, 
date back between six and eight hundred years. These are slow growing trees. Our oldest recorded tree out here is 1,300 years. This tree here, to give all of you an idea, the trees here were here when Christopher Columbus landed on the sandy beaches of Cuba in 1492, calling the Western Hemisphere the Americas. You know where they thought they had landed? India, thank you. That's you know why us native people of the Americas why we're called Indians, Indios, because of the Indian people of India. So they thought they had arrived in India. Now you're probably thinking, well, why 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 were they going to India? Let me tell you something about India, everyone. Yes, before refrigeration, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is not part of the tour. I'm just going to add it. All right, before refrigeration. The only way humanity could preserve safely food to eat was by spicing it and salting it. Now, to give you an idea, one of the oldest civilizations that figured this out is India. Okay? So, Spain becoming a world power needed safe food. So, what do they do? They create a spice and salt and linen trade with India. But going from Spain to India, and they received their goods, as they came back, they had to fight so many tribes that wanted those spices too. By the time they made it to Spain, it was counterproductive. They had lost more than half. So what did the Spain, what did the Spanish uh, uh, king and queen decided? Let's find an alternative route. So they gave an alternative money to find an alternative route. No one knew there was a strip of land that had been not connected by the early time of that time. No one knew there was it was here. So the Spanish arrived in Cuba and encountered the Taino people for the first time. And that, that's, that's the introduction of the West. Fascinating, right? Today, around the world, seven out of ten spices in your pantry are spices that were created in India. Most people don't know that the global universities of the world, the most intelligent minds at one point in history came together in Baghdad and they started sharing information with each other and the world became taught. And, and the studies, the, the notion of gathering minds together that we now call universities was started in the cradle of Baghdad. That's where everything got started, okay? There's five countries that surround that area that would benefit directly. The Spanish would get their their technology from the Moors. And then the Spanish came to the Americas, brought the technology here. But most people today don't know that many of our Spanish words are Arab words. Camisa, pantalón, algodón, aceite. Uh, most people don't know that it's been an ongoing process that started in the cradle of humanity which is the Mesopotamia area, the Anatolia area. Seven out of 10 farm animals today in the world were domesticated by the Anatolians, which is current day Turkey. Are you with me here, guys? Of course. That was not part of the tour. I just thought I'd share that with you. Here goes a little Texas fun fact. Did you know that in this country, up until now, we've only had 46 presidents? And out of all 46, only two have been born in Texas. Despite of many proclaiming to be from here, they were not born in the Lone Star State. Now, let me help out a little bit. None of the Bushes were born in Texas. It's Lyndon B. Johnson and Dwight D. Eisenhower. Bush Sr. was born in Massachusetts. Bush son was born in Connecticut. 
Here in Texas, we call them Yankees. <laughs> President Ronald Reagan, when he traveled the world as a world leader, uh, he often wore cowboy hats and cowboy boots. Many world leaders, part of being a world leader, everyone, is being cultured. Many world leaders are extremely cultured. And when they would see him with the Texas apparel, he was questioned, Mr. Reagan, are you from Texas? He had to say, I'm not from Texas, neither am I from California, but I'm from the state of Illinois. He was a Midwesterner. Yes, but he wore cowboy hats and cowboy boots, Texas style, so world leaders thought he might have been from Texas. The building here to the left-hand side is the Tower Life Building, built by the Smith Brothers who came here from New York City in the middle of the 1920s. Now let me tell you something about America, the 1920s and skyscrapers. Again, this is not part of the tour, everyone. I'm just going to add this so that you walk off this boat knowing a little more than you thought you'd get from this ride. Before the 1930s, in America, there was absolutely no skyscrapers west of the Mississippi River. They were all north or east of the Mississippi. The Smith brothers, they were Scottish, of, 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 uh, they were Scottish born in America, decided to bring the first five skyscrapers to the south here at San Antonio in the mid-1920s. Their idea was to build five. They only completed one. They did not build the other four, but let me tell you what went wrong. In the 1930s in America, it was very fashionable, very common for people to be extremely superstitious, okay? These two brothers were extremely superstitious. And you can tell by looking underneath the second row of windows down here, how they added ugly faces to the facade. See that? Now follow the building up, further up. Before you reach the flag, there's some stumps coming out of it. Those stumps are 900 pound cement gargoyles. Functional water spouts. When it rains, at the, moment, the water shoots out of their mouths beautifully. So romantic, if you ask me. And that, that was put there with the belief that by having them, they would keep that business, evil spirits, from it. Unfortunately, that didn't work. This building was completed in the month of June of 1929. In America, by October 1929, it was the initial start of the infamous Great Depression. These gentlemen had all of their money in the stock market. The stock market was what suffered the depression. They were bankrupt. Instantly, overnight, these two wealthy brothers found themselves begging for food. We get hungry every day, everyone. These people had no money after 19, December, or rather, October 29, 1929. They were penniless. They were begging for food just a week after that, okay? So they packed up and left San Antonio in the middle of the night, but they left us the tallest building west of the Mississippi for more than 20 years, the only octagon-shaped building outside of New York City still today in America. Now the red building straight ahead with the green roof and steeple is it's often confused by many to be a church because of the steeple. That building is the complete opposite of that. It's the Bear County Courthouse. Whatever you do, don't go there to start <laughs> confessing everyone. It's not the place to do that. Take a look here to the left. You're going to see the trajectory of the San Antonio River headed to the Gulf of Mexico, 140 miles from here. This is the reason why we're taking a right turn. You only paid for a two-mile boat right this morning. <laughs> That's where we're going the opposite direction. Take a look here for all you romantic people on board. Up on street level, our very own box of love. Couples come here from around the world. They come here 
and uh, they bring the lock, they lock it up, they hold the key, they kiss it, kiss each other, and throw the key to the deepest part of the river. That's where we're at now, the deepest part of the river wall. 30 feet deep. Those of you visiting Texas for the first time, welcome to Texas, y'all. That's right, y'all. Texas, it's the second largest landmass of state of America after Alaska. In the lower 48, it is the largest piece of real estate. Texas, everyone, has just under 30 million residents that call it home. And we have well over 67 billionaires. Most people don't know that the wealthiest man on this planet lives in Texas. He moved here from South Africa. He brought his electric car company from California. He built the launch pad in Texas to reach the stars from the Lone Star State. And some of you might be tweeting in his new company that he just purchased <laughs> for $44 billion. He probably guessed it. Elon Musk lives in Texas. Every state of this country has an official state tree. Would anyone know what the official tree of Texas would be? It is the pecan tree. Pecan. Many people in this country say pecan. We know exactly what they're saying. But that's not said correctly. Pecan is a native Algonquin Indian would give the tree, and it means nut in Algonquin language. Pecan is the way we make it. Anyone know what's a state bird? The state bird of Texas, everyone, is the mosquito. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> I'm just trying to see who's paying attention who's not. It's the mockingbird. Mockingbird. Biologists say no one knows for sure the real sounds of a mockingbird. The word mocking means imitate. They imitate other birds. They don't have a song of their own. That's why they're Anyone know what's the state flower? Uh, no. no. It's not. We often hear the Texas yellow rose, but that is <laughs> Santa Ana, the, the president of Mexico at the time of the Battle of the Alamo, had a girlfriend by the name of Emily West. Legend has, America has refused to put this as actual history, but we all know that actually took place. Sam Houston lured Santa Ana to San Jacinto with Emily West. So he went there with just a fraction of his friends and Sam Houston ambushed him, but he knew that he would get him away from his soldiers if Emily West invited him personally. And that's how Santa Ana was captured by Sam Houston. America still today refuses to include that in history, but Mexico knows exactly what happened. He was lured there and ambushed. By asking Emily West to invite him. And that's the way he was able to get away from his soldiers and get captured. But Europe has seen greater empires fall because of the group. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> The little small footbridge up ahead is famously known to us as the Selena Bridge. Selena Quintanilla and then band member boyfriend Chris Pettis and her came to San Antonio to put on a concert. 
After the concert, they decided to go for a small walk on the river as they walked across the footbridge. He stopped her up on top, went down on one knee, and planted her the big question. She immediately said yes. They did not marry in this city. They married in Corpus Christi, where they're from. But this is where he proposed to her in real life. After her tragic death, a movie's made, played by the lead star Jennifer Lopez. She came here and used this same bridge to reenact that famous scene in the movie Selena with Jennifer Lopez. And guess what, everyone? I was very fortunate to have been working the <laughs> As you can imagine what happened next with me and Jennifer Lopez, of course. We engaged in locked eyes, of course. Had we stayed together long enough, they would have called us Rob <laughs> Right now they're calling her Bennifer because she's with a guy from Boston named Ben I don't see nothing handsome about that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's, it's that's their second go. rodeo. Did you know, everyone, that the physical year has 52 weeks? If you were to go to a restaurant once a week out here on the wall, you won't repeat the first one you went to for more than one physical year. The studies show that about almost close to two years. It'll take you to repeat the first one you went to because of how many we have out here. And we have two to three restaurants opening, opening up new every year. There's new restaurants opening up in the area, making the River Walk a very, very interesting place to date. Now, as soon as I clear this bridge, if I could have everyone, everyone, look over to my left. Look so, up the building. This building takes up half the city block But it's going to appear to us like a flat wall. Like some sort of magic trick. I don't want you to miss it. As soon as I clear the bridge to the left of the building, it promotes this here. It's going to freak you out. Look here to the left of the building. Oh yeah. What? That's a little flat. Oh wow, indeed. Did you know everyone this building here is built in a tray a 32 degree flat tray? Now because you and I have our eyes set in front of us like predators, we have excellent perception. Because of this, we, we cannot work our vision like around. Yeah, it's like falling, right? <laughs> our eyes are telling, is telling our brain that it's a flat wall. But we all know the building takes up half the city. It's just the way we see it. So it just looks flat. But it's like it's running. It was the oh, first air-conditioned hospital in the United States in 1930. Now let me tell you that today we could not be comfortable without air conditioning. But what most people don't know is that Willis Carrier invented air conditioning by complete accident. He was an engineer that worked for a printing press that was having difficulties keeping the ink from melting in the summer heat leaching into the print, ruining the day's print. It was no good, they had to scratch it out, start all over. Being the engineer, he was given the job to create a cooling system for the ink. He went home, he worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and he created a, a cooling system for the ink, accidentally inventing air conditioning. Five years after he patented his first initial idea, he is a self-made billionaire. He was 27 years old. He was born in New York City, where most buildings still today have no air conditioning. The air conditioning was started here in San Antonio. This city offered Mr. Willis Carrier the opportunity to install air conditioning in buildings. So we would be the first in the nation, if not the world, to have air conditioning. 
Thank you. Refrigeration, Thank you so everyone. Er Follow. <laughs> Refrigeration so that we know changed our lives forever. No longer needing to spice our food to survive. Today, we can put all of our food in a refrigerator and it'd be waiting for us there without the need for you and I to go hunt. It's changed the world forever. Fascinating, right? How many of you know who Johnny Cash is, the country western singer of America? Yes, Mr. Cash, everyone, was 21 years old. The year is 1957. He stationed at Blackland Air Force Base in the city. They would bring him out here on the weekends as they do now. And he met a hostess on this river walk by the name of Viviana Liberto, who he fell in love with and married just three months after they met. Can you imagine yourselves meet someone that you love so much that you marry in three months? That's not me, no. <laughs> he married her after meeting her on this river. While dating Viviana Liberto on the river walk, he used to stay down at the restaurants. And the mariachis, the Mexican mariachis out here, would go to his table side and play mariachi music. He admitted that he had never heard Mexican mariachi music ever in his life until he came here, dating began. When he became successful in his career, he decided to use a mariachi Mexican band to record one of his most iconic hit songs. Now you have to understand, he's from Tennessee where he played country music. Would anyone know what song I'm talking about? <laughs> Love is a burning ring and it burns like a ring of fire, everyone. That is a mariachi song. The record companies in Tennessee did not want him to use a Mexican mariachi to record that song. Mr. Cash went against everything the recording companies told him. He said, if I don't do this song with mariachis, I'm not going to do the album. Back in those days, an artist would make a single, and if it sold, they would finance the album. Okay? That single became Johnny Cash's most, most requested played song in his entire career. The people in America didn't understand the sound. They were Mayachi Mexicans with a country voice of Tennessee. Fascinating, right? Here goes another little Texas fun fact that I want you to know. Don't want you to leave the city without knowing this. Did you know, everyone, that that 99% of us in America know this city because of the Alamo? But did you know that 99% of us Americans, despite of knowing so much about that mission, we don't know the name of it? Studies have shown over and over and over that 99% of Americans don't know the name of the Alamo. The Alamo is just a nickname. Let me tell you what the name is. What is it? It's Mission San Antonio de Valero. Valero is the real name of that mission. Why do we call it the Alamo? We call it that simply because when the Spanish built the missions, all five of them, they built that one in the middle of a 40-acre cow pasture. There's no trees, no electricity in this time in history. The Spanish know that if they don't put something to shade it, they're going to bake in the middle of the field in the summer heat. So they cleverly planted fast-growing cottonwood trees all around it. Whenever the people of the city used to say, I'm going to go to the mission, they'd say, which one? Let's say the one with the cottonwoods. But if you know history, you would also know that for 283 years, Texas is a northern state of Mexico called Texas. People speak Spanish in Texas. 
I'm going to go to the mission. ¿Cuál de todas las misiones? Yo supongo que para ahora debemos de saber. En esta ciudad de San Antonio tenemos cinco misiones. ¿Estamos de acuerdo? Vamos a ir a la misión de los álamos. Cottonwood tree in Spanish is called an álamo. It was dubbed by the local residents of this city, not the state, not the Mexican government, not by early Americans invited here by Mexico. It was dubbed by the local residents. Today, 99% of the population of this country, ladies and gentlemen, do not know what you just heard right now. They do not know that. Okay? Every study has indicated that. And I didn't want you to leave this city without knowing that. Okay? Because this city is recognized because of the Alamo. All right? Now, if you look straight ahead, you're going to see a stargazer. This stargazer is a young Native American young lady. She's made out of volcanic rock brought from Mexico City. The star she holds is made out of marble. It has a little hole. And that hole was used so they could look through it. And she's staring at Venus. Venus appears on the western night sky during the month of February, completely visible with our eyes. Native people of the Americas, we've been taught told that we were simple hunters and gatherers. The, the truth is that every Native tribe of the Americas We were stargazers. We were in tune with our stars in constellations. And our moon. Part of the river that we're coming to now is River Center Mall, the second largest mall in the city of ten. This mall was built by the then owner of the San Francisco 49ers, Mr. Eduardo de Barcelo, Mr. De Barcelo. Yes, I want to get it back. Yes, that's my identical twin. Oh. <laughs> Here, here's another little interesting fact, everyone. See that? One, one ten, yes. See that tree there? You see the star? You see the ornaments? Let me share something with all of you about Christmas in America, everyone. Today, in America, 90% of us in this country, we celebrate Christmas with a pine tree. What most people in America don't know is that the celebration with a pine tree is a tradition that comes from Germany. Okay? It was not part of American culture. This is what the German immigrants that came to America brought. Now, the reason why we put a star upon the tree, the biblical story talks about three wise men that noticed a northern star and the over, the, over the horizon in the desert, and they followed it, and it led them to a city called Bethlehem. <laughs> In Bethlehem, there was a child by the name of Jesus of Nazareth who had been born, and they gave him three particular gifts. In America, we have a Christmas tree, we put that star, and we share gifts with each other by placing them underneath the tree or underneath the star. What most of us in this country don't know is that the first family in America to celebrate Christmas with Christmas lights occurred in 1868. And that man is J.P. Morgan. In America, it is the owner of the financial institution known today as Chase Bank. Mr. J.P. Morgan, ladies and gentlemen, was the financial support of the first electrician of this country by the name of Thomas Edison. Mr. Edison, to convince Mr. Morgan, installed electricity 
in Mr. Morgan's home in 1868. He was the first American to have electricity throughout his entire house. Electricity would then be promoted to the world from the World's Fair of Chicago in 1893. Now what some people don't know, very controversial in America, Thomas Edison was from Mexico. The first electrician in the world, Thomas Edison, was Tomas Alba Edison, and he lived in Jalisco, Mexico. And he came from, from the Spanish who came. Most people don't know that when the Spanish came to the Americas, everyone, the, the, the men in charge were Spanish. The rest of the people were Arab. The Arabs were given freedom after seven years of service to the Spanish crown. Once they were given freedom, they came north, where the land was more similar to them. They were all men. Over 80,000 Arab men with Spanish names would come north of Mexico. And they married indigenous women. Native, modern Mexican people of the north, like myself. We are not Spanish crossed, but Arab crossed. Okay? 54% of Arab Mexican. This is the modern Mexican people of the north. Are you, are you following me here, guys? Yeah. Our food, our language, our traditions are derived. Mexican native people are not bearded. This is, the, this is what we get from the Spanish and the Moors, who were part of Spain for 700 years. And then they came northward, okay? That's why when you see a northern Mexican person and an Arab person, you, it's difficult to, to distinguish who's who, okay? And that's because us northern Mexican people are Arab cross, right? You can see it in our film. This is history that you're not taught in school everyone. Like this is history that people know, you professors know this. And they 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 teach it only at a university level. And only you're venturing in history. Because typically we get taught only the surface of history. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> it is taught in your university when electricians go that route. Take our physicists. Take a look to the right hand side. I'm going to show you why this city, everyone, is called San Antonio. It's the saint here to my right. This here is San Antonio de Padua. He was born in 1195 in Portugal and died June 13, 1231 in Padua, Italia. Now look at just how history happens, everyone. Again, you're not going to be taught this in school. 300 years after his death, about 400 Spanish men arrived here completely unannounced. No one invited them here. But here is not alone. There's over 30,000 native Payaya Indians. They call this place Yanapua. In their language, it means a place of peaceful waters. The Spanish arrived and listened to what they said that morning. They arrived here and they said, this is the Spanish speaking, we've encountered a massive tribe of native people. They've welcomed us with open arms. They are so kind of us. They seem perfect candidates for Catholicism. The reason why this city has five missions, everyone, is because of how kind the native 
were to the Spanish. Because of that welcoming that they had, they decided to stay. This place is called Yanapuana since antiquity. The Spanish arrived here June 13, 1691. On the Catholic calendar, it's the feast day of that saint called San Antonio. There's no coincidence. This city is called San Antonio. They arrived on that day. We all know where Houston, Texas got its name from. Sam Houston, Houston, Texas. Our state capital of Austin, named after Stephen F. Austin. Anyone on board from Corpus Christi? Anyone know what Corpus Christi means? Body of Christ. Body of Christ in Latin. From the 11th century to the 18th century, the universal language of the world was Latin. So Spanish went around the world naming places in Latin. Like Corpus Christi, Cuerpo de Cristo. The business language of the world from the 11th to the 18th century was Spanish. Would anyone know what's the business language of the world today? English. If you want to do global business, being a young crowd here, please learn to speak English. It is the global business language. Now, if you want to communicate with the world, Today, the global language today, 20 countries speak Spanish, okay? This is the global language of the world today. By the year 2035, 60% of the globe will have means of communicating in Spanish. It's a fact, all right? It is where the world is going to. Many of our visitors that come to the city leave San Antonio without knowing that San Antonio is recognized by this country to be the second oldest continuous city of America. In this country, there is only one other city older than the one you're in. That is San Agustin, Florida. San Antonio, to give you an idea, was made an official city 58 years before the United States is made an official country. The Alamo predates America 47 years. Our police department in this city predates America 46 years. Okay? The United States had not been thought of yet. We were already operating in this city. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we're coming to now is back to where you got on, which indicates the end of our riverboat ride. I'd like to thank all of you for riding with me today. Please look around your area and make sure you have your belongings with you. Go Rio Cruises, the Riverboat Company I work for, has been kind enough, I hope we are also, to allow me and every boat captain out yes, for a job well done to receive gratuities, <laughs> tips, propinas. Look at here. They've given me this little jar that I added cash up to. In case you don't carry cash, you can use your phone, pull something there. But most important, everyone, I hope this boat tour has Sparked a curiosity in history. The only way we could improve ourselves in the future is to understand the mistakes we've done in our past. Mi casa es su casa. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberto. It's really good. How much was I don't know. I haven't checked. Same with you. That's a lot of history and fact, huh? Ya tadi jelasin banyak hal banget. Gua bakal coba menerjemahkan ya.
seluruh hal-hal yang tadi dikatakan sama Roberto Roberto Mendoza I really enjoy this it's really good eh Satya is talking <laughs> hello Satya <laughs> Subscribe ke bern.id Dan jangan lupa untuk mengunduh Pranala App Untuk video terbaru, kamu bisa klik video di kanan atas Dan untuk video rekomendasi, bisa klik video di kanan bawah Terima kasih.